All right, Patio Cinnamon. Now you stay right here and keep an eye on the Silver Star, hmm? <laughs> oh, hi. Hey, welcome. Come in, come in. I'm Craig Holbrook, station director here at KCHS 632 on your AM radio dial. And I want to welcome you this holiday season to our production of The Cinnamon Bear. <sighs> Smooth. That's holiday hot chocolate. The Cinnamon Bear first aired in 1937. It was a holiday hit, especially in the Midwest and the Northwest. In Portland, it became a radio staple every holiday season. As a matter of fact, it aired somewhere every year since that first broadcast. Originally commissioned by the Littman Company, later Frederick and Nelson, it was created to generate Christmas excitement and sales. As a matter of fact, Candy Theater's own Don Feely worked at Littman Company, and every once in a while he'd be called upon to put on the Cinnamon Bear costume and pass out cookies to children at Eastport Plaza. On a personal note, my dad was born in 1938, and the Cinnamon Bear became a special holiday uh, radio show for him every Christmas when he was a child. And later, when I came along, he shared the Cinnamon Bear with me, and we would listen to it together. And every Christmas, I would go down to Eastport Plaza and see the Cinnamon Bear. And I want to thank the troupe for allowing me to dedicate our production to my father. Love you, Dad. Now, three quick things. One, click the link here to download a picture, a map of Maybe Land and a picture of the cinnamon bear that you can color while you listen to the show. And click the link here to subscribe to our channel. You can view past productions and be clued in when future productions are coming up, like our senior directed one acts coming in February, 2021. And lastly, you can pause at any time, go get yourself another hot chocolate. We'll be right here waiting for you now. From all of us at 632 to all of you, Feliz Navidad, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and as Patio Cinnamon would say, we thank you very much indeed. Ta. This is the story of the Cinnamon Bear and his very marvelous adventures with Judy and Jimmy Bartlett. But we can't very well meet the Cinnamon Bear until we meet Judy and Jimmy. They are twins and they live in a big old fashioned house. At this very minute, they're in the upstairs sitting room. And from all I can hear, Judy and Jimmy are busily engaged in that very pleasant task of writing letters to Santa Claus. Let's listen. How are you getting along with your letter, Jimmy? Oh, pretty well. I guess I got about everything down here. Now don't go asking for everything the way you did last year. Oh, you girls are all alike. I bet you if we counted things in your letter and the things in mine, you'd have the most. Why, well, I bet you I wouldn't either. You would? Well, I won't argue about it. But I bet you my letter's more dignified than yours. Judy, Jimmy. Yes, Mother? We're here, Mother. Have you finished those letters to Santa Claus yet? Uh-huh. Yes. That's good, because we still have something very important to do. What's that, Mother? What do you suppose I have in those cardboard boxes here? I know, our Christmas tree ornaments. Yes, and you promised us we could go through them with you to see if any of them were broken. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's hurry, Mother. I can't wait. Just a minute. I'll put them right here on the table. Oh, boy. I hope that little pink Santa Claus didn't get broken. We'll see. Oh, aren't they beautiful? I'll say. I like those big gold ones especially. Everything seems to be pretty much in order. The tinsel is here, all the lights. Everything seems to be here except, uh... Except what, Mother? Well, I can't see the silver star anywhere. You mean the big one we always put way on top of the tree? 
Yes, but I don't see it in any of the boxes. Ah, oh, gee, Mom. I feel most awful if anything happened to that old silver star. Me too. We've had it on top of our tree for years and years. Christmas just wouldn't be the same without the silver star. Now, don't cry, Judy. It's probably just misplaced. I remember Uncle Jed took some things up to the attic last year after Christmas. Perhaps he put it away up there. Could we go up and look for it, Mother? All right. If Uncle Jed put it away, it's probably in the big trunk in the corner by the window. Be careful you don't hurt your fingers when you open it. We'll be careful. Come on, Jimmy. Okay, here we go, up the stairs. <sighs> here we are. Yeah. Gee, there sure is a lot of stuff up in this attic. Oh, Judy, there's that old trunk Mother told us to look in. Must be awful full of things. The top isn't closed all the way down. Well, you get on one side, Judy, and I'll get on the other, and then we can both lift at the same time. All right, Jimmy. Oh, look, Jimmy. There's one of those old crazy quilts right on top. Take it off and we'll see what's underneath. Okay. There. Hmm. Smells like mothballs, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Do you see the silver star any place? Uh-uh. Just a lot of old clothes and stuff. Let's lift this top thing out. Come on, Judy, help me. All right. Now, let's see. Say, here's a small box of ornaments. Oh, but they're all broken, Jimmy. And the silver star isn't in there. Gee, here's one that's not broken. It's a pretty little airplane. It makes out of gold glass or something. Find anything else, Judy? You bet. Look at this, Jimmy. A little teddy bear with a green ribbon around his neck. Gee, he isn't more than four inches high. Look, look what I found, Judy. A real honest-to-goodness telescope. Isn't it a dandy? Scrumptious. I bet that belonged to Uncle Jed when he was a sailor. I bet so, too. It sure is a wonderful telescope. When I look through it, everything seems a million times bigger. Boy, I bet if I looked out on the roof, I could see clear over to England. Further than that, maybe. You know what, Jimmy? What? This teddy bear is the teeniest one I've ever seen. Sure is. Say, Judy, I bet if we looked at him through this telescope, he'd be a lot bigger. Let's see, shall we? I'll lean my back in the trunk and you look. All right. Now, just wait till I get it fixed. Jimmy Cricket! What do you see, Jimmy? Willikers. He's bigger than anything. Take a look, Judy. Let me see. Goodness, he is big, isn't he? Why, he looks almost as big as we are. Only he really isn't. If you move over a little, Judy, we can both see at the same time. There, that's it. Can you see him? Plain as day. Uh, Judy? Judy, he moved. The bear moved. Did you see him moving? I, I thought I did, but... Sure he moved. Gosh. Gruff. Judy! I'm listening. He made a noise. Maybe it was just a creaky board. No, it wasn't any creaky board. It was that bear. And I'm going to talk back to him. Oh, Jimmy, maybe you better hadn't. Oh, uh, don't get scared. He can't hurt you. He's only four inches high. Hey, you! You, teddy bear! Girl! Did you hear, Judy? Did you hear? He growled at me. Oh, he did, didn't he? Say, Jimmy, ask him if he's a really, truly real live bear. All right. Hey, teddy bear, tell us, who are you? I'm the cinnamon bear with a silver in my eye. And I'm looking for someone to take my surprise. Looking and prowling each night after dark, but the first day my growl is the cinnamon bar. Now I'll growl, growl, and I'll growl, growl, and if you let to spread, I'm much obliged to you. <laughs> that was wonderful, Cinnamon Bear. Growl. Jimmy, let's pretend we're really afraid of him. It'll make him feel good. Oh, all right. 
Sure. Ooh, don't give us a scare like that again, Mr. Cinnamon Bear. Kira. Oh, Judy, I'm scared. Guru. Oh, Jimmy, hold my hand tight. Jordan, did I really frighten you? Terribly. <laughs> you just scared about the daylights out of us. Well, I promise not to frighten you anymore. That is, until me throw snakes against the better of me again. Now, would you please be kind enough to tell me your names? I always keep a record of the people I scared. I'm Jimmy. And I'm Sister Judy. I'm much obliged to meet you, I'm sure. My name's Patty or Cinnamon. That sounds Irish. Well, sure, I'm slightly Irish. That's why I wear this green ribbon around my neck. But tell me, what are you two doing up here? Well, we lost the silver star that goes on top of our Christmas tree. Have you seen it, Cinnamon Bear? A silver star? Did it have five points? I, well, I think so. Sure, I've seen it. Lots of times. Oh, show us where the silver star is, Cinnamon Bear. Oh, it's not here now. It's gone. What shall we ever do now? Well, who took it? Well, boy, the crazy quilt dragon, to be sure. Who is he? Oh, uh, just a dragon. Not a very good one at that. He's terribly fond of shiny, bright things. Every day for the past month, he's been running into the trunk to admire the silver star. This afternoon, it got the best of him, I guess. He just stopped and ran off with it. Oh, we'll never, never see the star again. Here, here, here now. Don't carry on like that. You can get the silver star back. Well, maybe. How? By going after the crazy cult dragon. Chase him. I'll help you. Will you really? Oh, sure I will. Crazy Quilt's no great fan of mine. And besides, you are both very obliging. And we're perfectly terrified when I growled at you. Oh, you're the most wonderful cinnamon bear in the whole world. Oh, uh, it's very nice of you to say it. Well, if we're going to catch up to the Crazy Quilt Dragon, we better get going. Where do you think he went, Patty? Well, if I know Crazy Quilt, he probably headed for Lollipop Mountain, maybe land. Maybe land? How do we get there? See that little hole in the wall? Yes. Well, we just pop right through there. Oh, but Patty, Judy and I can't go through that little hole. Oh, yes, you can. It's very simple, really. All you and Judy have to do is degrow. What do you mean, degrow? Oh, just degrow. Get smaller and smaller and smaller until you're only four inches high. Like me. Really? That sounds most magical. Well, Curse, show us how, Patty. Quick. Of course, of course. Well, <laughs> it's really quite simple, you know. It's all in the way you look at it. We're only as big as we say we are. I don't understand what you mean, Cinnamon Bear. Well... You're used to seeing yourself the way you are now, about four and a half feet high. Now, when you look at me through the small end of the telescope, I'm big, aren't I? Uh-huh. Now, when you look through the small end, things look bigger. But if you turn the telescope around and look through the big end, they look very small. Oh! There. Now, the only thing you children have to do to be small is to see yourselves that way. But how are we going to do that, Cinnamon Bear? Yes, that's what I... I'd like to know. We can see each other. Sure, how can we see ourselves? Simple. The first thing you do is put the telescope up on top of that dresser there. The one with the looking glass. Fix it so the small end is next to the looking glass. And then look at yourselves through the big end. And press the change off. You'll be as small as me. Isn't this fun, Jimmy? Regular magic. Sure is, all right. Now come on and help me put on this telescope on top of the dresser. It's pretty heavy. Mm-hmm. There. We're all set now. Now you two can look through the telescope. All right. There. Why, I can see you and me, Judy. So can I. And we look so tiny. We... Oh! Whoa, gee willikers! Do you feel funny, Jimmy? Oh, gee willikers! Oh.
Bunny? Here we are. Why, we're at the other end of the telescope. And look how big everything is. Why, look way over there, Judy. The trunk seems as big as a mountain. And just a minute ago, we were taller than it is. Well, well, how'd you like being only four inches high? All right, I guess. Well, we'd better get started now. If you want to catch Crazy Quill Dragon, he's got a pretty big head start. Where do we go, Cinnamon Bear? Uh, right through that hole in the wall. Why, when we were down on the floor a while ago, it was only a tiny lip hole. Now it looks like a tunnel. That's exactly what it is, Judy. A tunnel. And it leads to maybe land. Oh dear. How are we ever going to get down off this big high dresser, Cinnamon Bear? In the airplane, to be sure. Why, look, Judy, over near the side of the dresser. It's that gold glass airplane I found in the trunk. Only now it's great big. But Cinnamon Bear, we can't go anywhere in that. Why, it's only a Christmas tree ornament. That's why you're very mistaken, Jimmy. That happens to be the very own extra private airplane, and it flies beautifully. It does? It certainly does. Absolutely. Why, look, Judy, it has a motor and everything. What does it run on, Cinnamon Bear? All the motors in Maybelline run on Soda Pop. Now, you and Judy climb in first. All right. All right. Oh, gee, this is wonderful. When do we start? In a second, Judy. Uh, can you jiggle that lever over there while I get the propeller going, Jimmy? Sure. Uh, this one? That's right. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so excited. Contact? Contact. Won't be a minute now and we'll be off for maybe now. Here, here we go. Whee! Woohoo! Oh boy! I just circled the room a couple of times and now we'll head for the tunnel. Oh, watch where you're flying, Cinnamon Bear. Just missed hitting the trunk. I'm sorry, Judy. Hold tight now. Here we go into the tunnel. It's awful dark in here. How can you see Cinnamon Bear? I mean, it's too about nice and it's especially dirty enough. Anyway, won't be long for now. We're nearly through the end of the tunnel already. Can't you see the light ahead? Sure enough. Why, look, we're outside. Oh, Jimmy, isn't it wonderful? Ooh, why, it's the most wonderful place I've ever seen. Is this what you call maybe land? Indeed. Do lots of people live here? Oh, God, you got to them. All kinds of dogs and little animals. And funny creatures you probably never even heard of. Are they all nice like you, Cinnamon Bear? Some are the bad. I heard. But I haven't met any or, or all of the inhabitants of Maybelline. Oh, it feels like a dream. What's this place we're flying over now? Those are the lollipop mounds, Judy. All those different colors you see down there are lollipop trees. Look! Is that the crazy quilt dragon? Where? Right over there, on top of the shiny cliff. Yes, sir, it's crazy cliff, all right. And that's, and that's a cliff on top of the looking glass valley. It's entirely of looking glass. It's probably such a spot for you to bend over and admire his reflection. He's very vain. Let's hurry and catch him. We must be specially cautious. Mustn't let him know we're after him now, Jimmy. You take that side. Judy, the other. No. All right. Walk straight at him. Okay, come on. Isn't it exciting, Jimmy? Hey, you! Classic quilt! I'm very busy right now, Cinnamon Bear. I'll speak to you some other time. Where's our Silver Star? Hey, Silver Star? Uh, what Silver Star? Now don't try and quibble, Crazy Quilt. Hand it over gracefully, and you can go your way. Oh, what a terrible mistake you've made. Why, I've never seen this, uh, silver star you're talking about. You must have the wrong party. You have too, got it. I can see it even if you're trying to hide it. It's our silver star and we've got to have it to put on top of our Christmas tree. You stole it out of that trunk and you know it. What? Oh, come, 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 come. You think... 
I would do such a wicked, wicked thing as still. Oh. You still insist that you didn't take it, Crazy Quilt? I repeat, I have not seen it. Well, we'll have to scare him. Let's go. Go on, scramble. <laughs> <back. laughs> yeah, to do. Oh, funny. Boo! Oh, oh, help, help, don't hurt me. Oh. He's slipping over the edge of the cliff. He fell into the ocean, right into the root beer ocean. Quick, we've got to run down so we can head him off when he comes out of the water. Come on. Hurry up, Judy. I'm coming. We'll get him. He can't escape this time. There, he's just coming up on the beach. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so unhappy. Such unkind people to say boot to a crazy quilt dragon. Don't you know you should never do that? Why shouldn't we? Well, I'll tell you. Don't ever say boo to a crazy quilt dragon. It hopes he'll turn tail and run. There aren't many words that will make him go crazy, but boo is decidedly one. You can say cheese it or scat if you please. It will certainly bother him none. Now shoo or skidoo, sir, would not be taboo, sir, but booing is just never done. Don't ever say boo to a crazy quilt dragon. No, never, not even in fun. Remember, a crazy quilt's colors are fast and are guaranteed never to run. <laughs> That was very pretty, crazy kid. Oh, go ahead and laugh. Though I suppose I deserve it for giving way to my base self. But if you only knew how weak I am when something beautiful and shiny attracts me. So when I found the silver star... You mean when you stole it? Well, if you want to put it that way... Oh, I never would have taken it if I had known how much it meant to you. May I apologize and ask your forgiveness? You mean, you're sorry, Crazy Quilt? Of course, little girl. And you will ever do it again? Oh, never, never, never. That's fine. Now, everything will be hunky-dory if you just return the Silver Star to us. Of course! Uh, only, uh... Only what? Only, it dropped out of my mouth when I jumped off the cliff. And it's lost in the root beer ocean. Oh, this is a pretty terrible halibut, if I do say so myself. You're a fine kind of dragon. First you steal our silver star, and now you go and lose it. Oh, me. Nothing but shame do I get. Shame to the left of me. Shame to the right of me. Don't try to pull any of that weepy-weepy stuff around here, crazy cook. It won't work. Alas! For ten centuries, uh, maybe eleven, the crazy quilt dragons have flourished with nary a blot on their escutcheon. Oh, to think that I must be the one to bring shame to our illustrious name. Oh, oh there, there, crazy quilt. Don't feel so bad about it. I must redeem myself. There is no three ways about it. I must. Now, if you could all overlook my past offenses, I... I'd gladly help you look for the star. Applesauce with raisins in it. Don't let him fool you, children. I really have good heart, you know. It's made out of red yarn, and it's been as true as true can be. Don't you think you could see your way clear to let me join up in your expedition? Huh? How's about it? And so it looks like a crazy quilt dragon who feels bad for stealing the silver star is now going to help Judy and Jimmy and the Cinnamon Bear find it again after it fell into the root beer ocean. But they met up with the mean Inkaboos, who threatened to throw them into the great inkwell. Aided by the scissor soldiers who held off the enemy, our heroes rushed down to the beach, jumped on Crazy Quilt's back, and plunged into the root beer ocean, where they discovered their precious silver star floating on the water. Just as Jimmy was about to pick it up, a blue and white polka dot whale rose out of the ocean and swallowed it. 
From that point, their adventures continued to get crazier as they came upon many more inhabitants of Maybeland, some friendly and some not so friendly. Wesley, the wailing whale, swallowed the silver stone, and when he coughed it up, Samuel the seal caught it and started to juggle it, which made it easy for Penelope the pelican to snatch it in midair and fly away with it. As Cinnamon Bear would say, it was a pretty kettle of halibuts. Along their travels, they met Mr. Presto, the correspondent school magician, who helped them get it back from Penelope. Unfortunately, however, she dropped the star on the island of Obi. Then, to crown their misfortune, all of a sudden they were surrounded by pirates. But these pirates were very different. They didn't make people walk the plank, and they didn't hunt for gold. All they wanted was candy, and plenty of it. Captain Taffy offered to sail them as far as the island of Obi, where the pelican dropped their silver star. When they get there, they sighted a roly-poly policeman on the beach, wearing their star on his chest. He was perfectly willing to give them their silver star, which he had pinned to his chest. By the time they got to him, however, that old crazy quilt dragon, who, you remember, liked bright shiny things, had gotten to the policeman first and off with their silver star. Professor Wiz, the educated owl, told them he'd seen the crazy quilt dragon go into the wintergreen witch's house, and what's more, he had the silver star with him. But when they entered the house, there wasn't a sign of crazy. At one end of the room was a huge picture of a forest. At least they thought it was a picture until they discovered it was a real forest. And so they went in and met Fifo, a gentle giant who helped them look in the goody goody grove to find Crazy Quilt and the Silver Star. So they left Fifo and plunged into the forest. And now we join our adventurers as all of a sudden like it got pitch dark and they saw two yellow lights like eyes flashing in the inky blackness. Oh, do you suppose it's the witch? Maybe it's some terrible monster. Oh, it's so dark and those awful yellow eyes. Don't be scared, Judy. I'll take care of you. What was that? Gee, I wish I knew. It's a awful monster. That's his breathing. Look, it's getting light again. Sure enough, it must have been magic. Oh, and there's the monster. Why, it's the Crazy Quilt Dragon. Hey, Crazy Quilt, wake up and hear the birdies. Here, let me try. I'll tweak his nose for it. Whoa! Oh, where am I? Never mind where you are. Where's our silver star? 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 Oh, I'm so bewildered. I... Oh, now it all comes back to me. Judy, Jimmy, and Patio Cinnamon. At long last, an end to this nightmare. Is it with you, my friends? Or am I still dreaming? Of course it's us. Who else would it be? I didn't know. I thought it might be more of the wintergreen witch's magic. Magic? Yes. Oh, you'll never know what I've been through. Oh, the shame of it all. Oh, agony. Why don't you stop in Inferno morning and tell us what happened? Well, to make a short story long. After the pirates sailed away with you, I dashed hither and thither like a mad thing in search of enough corks to make me watertight so I could swim after you. Did you find them? Luckily, yes. I stumbled upon the requisite four barrels of corks, swallowed them hastily, and in I plunged. And you swam after us all the way? All the way. A mere nothing, though. By the by, I was backstroke champion last year, you know. And I also hold medals for freestyle swimming in the root beer crawl. Oh, quit your bragging, crazy quilts, and get on with your story. Far be it from me to enumerate my aquatic achievements to an unappreciative audience. Well, anyway, I swam like 10,000 dragons and arrived at the island of Obi in remarkably good time. There, to my delight, I saw the silver star reposing on the bosom of the roly-poly policeman. And then you talked to him into giving it to you. I didn't, either. I was just about to engage him in some casual conversation when, well, Something indescribable overcame me. 
Yeah, you just couldn't resist the star. It was so bright and shiny. Oh, it was terrible. I wasn't myself at all. Some powerful and evil influence seemed to guide me. A voice kept repeating and repeating in my left ear. That's the blue and orange one, you know. Get the star! Come this way! And so, although I wanted to wait for you, in agony I fought to wait for you, this diabolical force kept pulling me! Oh, just itchy claws! That's all itchy claws! Don't interrupt him, Cinnamon Bear! <clears throat> And my utter shame, I succumbed to the voice, got the star by pretending you had sent me after it, and was drawn like steel to a magnet, up the beach, into a house, through the picture frame, into this magic forest, right to the spot where you found me just now, and then, oh, I shudder to think of it. What happened? The winter green witch appeared and stood before me, and then I realized it was she who had exercised this horrible power over me and made me steal the star. Oh, come now, crazy kid. Don't blame it on a lady. She is no lady. And she made me hand over the precious star. And then I think she must have put me in a short trance because that's all I remember. Oh, agony. Oh. Jimmy Crickets. Poor old crazy quilt. Sounds fishy to me. That's what it does. You believe me, don't you, Judy? Of course I do. Didn't you say it's from the Incaboos? Sure he did. Well, say, what did the witch look like, Crazy Quill? Oh, hideous, horrible, terrifying. She changed colors all the time. Ugly green, then purple, then blood red. And that nightmare of a face, great rolling eyes, three Things tearing through an ugly slit of a mouth. And, oh. Stop! I don't think I want to hear anymore. Ah, oh, Judy, if you're gonna get scared by hearing Crazy Quilt talk about that old witch, how are you gonna be when we meet her face to face? Go to meet her face to face. Oh, gotta be very brave. That's what I say, uh, though somewhat reluctantly. I guess I can be as brave as the rest of you, but how are we going to find our way back to the place we came through with the picture frame? Gee, well, Curse, I haven't thought about that. These woods look all the same. Do you know which way to go, Crazy Quilt? Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, or maybe dreadfully happy, that I haven't the slightest idea which way to reach the Wintergreen Witch's house. Remember, I've been in a trance or something. <laughs> I'd wish you'd go back into your trance and shut the door after you. Well, children, I, I guess there's nothing left for us to do but follow our noses and hope we'll find a place where we came in. Oh, what to do? Hmm. I know. The whistle. The one the giant gave me. Giant? Oh, I don't like that one little bit. Sounds bad. Oh, but Fifo's the gentle giant, and he was very nice to us. Sure. And he gave me this little whistle. And he said if we ever needed help, to blow on it three times, and he'd come a-running. I'm sure Fifo can help us. Blow the whistle quick, Jimmy. Okay. Oh, goodness, Jimmy. That's not loud enough for anyone to hear. Uh, better let me try it. I'm good at wood instruments, you know. Played the tuba in college. All right, crazy quilt. Here it is. I uh, watched the old maestro. I place the instrument thus, inhale, and... <coughs> what happened? Gee, Wilkers, he swallowed the whistle. This is the limit. What you have to go and swallow the whistle for? Couldn't help it. <coughs> Slipped. Oh dear, now we'll just have to walk and walk and maybe we'll never be able to get out of this old forest. <laughs> What's the matter, crazy quill? He's got the hiccups. <laughs> and every time he hiccups, it blows the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, crazy quill, do it again. <laughs> That's swell. You blew it three times. Good. 
Maybe people will come to our rescue. Bless Mustafa. I can hear him now. That's enough, Crazy Quill. FIFO heard you. Can't stop. It, it just keeps... Here I am, my little friends. Just as I'd said I'd be. Oh my gracious, you don't have to blow the whistle so many times. We're not doing it on purpose, FIFO. The Crazy Quill Dragon has got it caught in his throat. And every time he hiccups, it whistles. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ho, 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 ho. I'll fix that. Just a pat on the back. There it is. Oh, what an ordeal. Why does everything happen to me? Because you're always sticking your crazy quilt nose in somebody else's business, that's why. So, this is the crazy quilt dragon you were looking for? And did he give you back your magic star? No, he didn't, Fifo, because the Winter Green Witch did something magic to him and made him bring it to her. Crazy Quilch says she's a terrible old witch. Does she scare you, Fifo? It all depends on what color she is. Hmm, that's right. Didn't you say she changed colors, Crazy Quilch? Definitely. And you didn't believe me, Smarty. She changed from green to purple to red. Oh, that's bad. When she's all right, she stays green. But when she gets a notion to practice magic, she goes all sorts of colors. Well, no matter what color she gets, we've got to go find her. Yes, and that's why we called for you, Fifo. We thought maybe you'd be real nice and take us back to the place we came through, the picture frame. We don't know which way to go. I'd be glad to. Only, I'm sorry to see you leave the magic forest. It's awful lonesome here. Maybe you can come back and see me again, huh? Well, Curse, I don't see how we can, Fifo, on account we have to get our star and get back home before Christmas. Oh, well, maybe someday you can. All right, everybody, I'll put the dragon on my left shoulder and the rest of you up on my right. Up you go. Whee! We're way up in the air. My, my, this is something new for me. My, you are a whopper of a giant, Fifo. Simply a whopper. Here we go, hold tight. Here we are, folks, end of the trip. What, so soon? Sorry. People know Slowpoke, only take a few of his big steps to get to some place in a hurry. All right now, down you go. Gee, we're right where we came in too. I can see right through the trees into the Wintergreen Witch's house. Well, my friends, I wish I were small enough to go through the picture frame with you, but that's impossible. So I'll just have to say goodbye and good luck. Goodbye, Fifo. We'll never, never forget you. You bet, and thanks a million. Goodbye. And I hope the witch stays green. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye gentle giant. All right now, study yourselves, everybody, and through the picture frame. Okay, Cinnamon Bear, here I go. And me. And reluctantly, I. Hmm, the room's empty. Splendid, splendid. <laughs> oh, the oh, witch! The witch, oh, witch. witch! My pretty dears, right. Thought it wasn't here, eh? <laughs> Jimmy? Excuse me. I just remembered I loved the water running in the bathtub. I'll see you later. Uh, me too. Come on, children. Out the door. It closed itself. Hurry, back to the picture frame. Oh, it's nothing but a black frame picture now. <laughs> oh, trapped. Doom it. This is the end. Chimney crickets. Look at the witch. She's changing colors!
green and blue and purple and red? Sit down, my dainties. Sit down and make yourselves comfortable because you'll be here for a long time. <laughs> What are you going to do to us, Mrs. Witch? You find out and don't call me Mrs. Witch. Please, Mrs. Wintergreen. <coughs> give us our silver star back and let us go. Yes, uh, please give it back. We've come an awful long ways to get it. <clears throat> and after all, madame... What does a wonderful sorceress with your great power wants with a paltry Christmas ornament, hmm? I want it for my magic forest. That's something I've never had before. I'm going to hang it in the sky over the black lake. Well, if we can't have the star, would you mind if we do sort of mosey it along? <laughs> oh, you don't. I have other plans, my pretties. Other plans. Well, I bet you can't do anything to Judy and me, because we belong to the USA. I bet you can't magic any American citizens, so there. Besides, we don't believe in witches anyhow. They're just to scare people on Halloween. So, you don't believe when your green witch can do magic things, eh? I shall demonstrate. First, I open the door. Now, see how beautiful and clear it is outside? Indeed, and how I'd like to be outside. Now! the door. I open the door again. Hello? You will curse look. Is there any cats and dogs? Yes, my pretty dear. 
I have something much nicer than the silver star for you, and it's ever so much shinier. Look! Ah! Ah! Take it away! Take it away! Don't you know witches can't stand to see their own faces? Take it away! What a break! Keep on throwing it, Ty Judy. No! No, no, no! I'll do anything you ask! Anything! All right, first you gotta let us go. And promise not to do anything to us after we leave. Yes, 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 but just take that dreadful looking glass with you! And you've gotta give us back our silver star! Ah! Uh, and that here! Oh, Jimmy! At last we've got it back! Open the door, witch, and make it snappy! <laughs> And boo for you, Mrs. Wintergreen. Come along, children. <sighs> Isn't this swell, Judy? We've got the star and everything. Beautiful. Yeah, but we can't stop to admire it now. We've got to get, we've got to rush right down to the shore and get right back across the Rupert Ocean. Come on, hurry, everybody. You think you could swim us all the way back, Crazy Quill? Absolutely. I'm plenty full of corks to manage it. Climb aboard. I think I'd better carry the star. Pardon the suggestion, but I've an ideal place for it. My kind pocket. The one under that big orange patch. It's waterproof and has a zipper. Okay, Crazy Quill, unzip. With pleasure. And in it goes. Zip it again. And safe and sound. And hold on, my friends, for it's cheerio and into the root beer ocean. You sure made a great time, Crazy Quilt. Here we are, back on Maybeland Mainland. Now that we're all hunky-dory, I must ask you all to excuse me while I sit down and rest a bit from my strenuous swim. Sure. You got it coming to you, all right? Uh-huh. Oh, mm -hmm. I think this would be a lovely spot, right here in the lee of this rock. There. Now, I'll just lean back and then... Mm -hmm. What was that? Oh, 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 I fear, uh, oh, my friends. Oh, I'm blushing red. I, well, behold the star. Toilet curse, it's busted. In a dozen pieces. If you had to sit down, crazy cult, why pick a rock to sit on? Oh, I am abject. I am speechless, but I beg you to realize that my mistake was unintentional. Oh, we know you didn't mean to do it, but gee, crazy quilt, couldn't you have used your head a little bit? Well. Don't go picking on poor crazy quilt. Of course he didn't mean to break the star, but making him feel bad isn't going to do him any good. Gladly. Anything to help atone for my frightful carelessness. Anything to... Wait. Why don't we go and see Melissa? Splendid. Now why didn't I think of that? Who's, Who's Melissa? Melissa? Haven't you heard of her? Why, she's our queen. The ruler of Babyland. What could she do? What can't she do, you mean? She's wonderful, so kind and generous. Everybody loves her. Well, that's well, but what could she do about her silver star? Anything, everything. She has wonderful powers. Nothing is impossible to her. Why, do you know, once upon a time, I had the great misfortune to fall into a lemonade wishing well and all my beautiful colors ran together. <laughs> I sure would have loved to have seen you then. I shall overlook your remark. Oh, I was a mess. I thought surely I'd never be able to hold up my head in society. But I went to Melissa and she restored me to my natural splendor and beauty. 
Oh, goody. Maybe she can help us. Where does Melissa live? Oh, she lives in the palace in the capital of Maybeland, a bit southish of the Lollipop Mountains, right in the middle of Marshmallow Meadows. Maybe she'll know how to have the star put together again. I'm sure she will. Well, will you take us there, Crazy Quilt? Certainly. I'm quite as good on land as on water. Everybody help me pick up the pieces of the star. Jimmy, let me have your hanky. It's bigger than mine. Okay, here it is. Ah, oh, here are some pieces. Of pieces yeah, over some, here. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's some more. Some there. there you go. Okay, I think Jimmy and I have all the rest. Hold out your hanky, Jimmy. Uh, okay. There. All right. All right now. Let's get started. Climb on, everybody. Up you go, Judy. Up, Jimmy. Well, we're on. Outdo yourself, Crazy Quilt. Gallop as you've never galloped before. Gallop before. This is the anteroom to the Queen's audience chamber. We'll have to wait here until time for us to see the Grand Wonky. He's sort of head of all the ceremonies and presents everybody to Melissa. I wish he'd hurry. Me stuffings are getting very tired. Oh, I don't mind waiting so much. It's so beautiful. I like to look down that big staircase and see all the people passing up and down. Oh, there you are. So sorry to keep you waiting, but you know how it is so much busy. You are the crazy quilt dragon, are you not? I'm sure I've seen you before. I'm very good at remembering places. I mean faces. It's my job. Now, now where were we? Oh, <clears throat> awfully nice of you to stop it and all that. Must come again sometime. Uh, I'm Judy. I'm Jimmy. And I'm the cinnamon bear. That's us, and we're very anxious to see Melissa. Now let's see, what formation would look best? Let me see, yes. The little girl first, then I think the boy is slightly behind her with the bear. Then the crazy quilt dragon bringing up the rear guard. I think everything is in order. Do you mind if I adjust your green bow, little bear? I think you'll keep your hands off my bow. And my name is Patty or Cinnamon, if you please. Oh yes, 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 of course, of course. <clears throat> I think we may enter now. About time. Over the port. My, 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 those hinges need oiling dreadfully. Must make a note of that. See about oiling all hinges. Now, are we all hunky bunky? Yes, wonky. Dundley, the fanfare. Oh, thank you, Dundley. Oh, thank you, Dundley. It's lovely. Thank you. And now, my friends, you might enter the presence of Queen Melissa of Maidenland. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh, oh, my goodness. Isn't she beautiful, Jimmy? You bet. Why, she's nearly as pretty as Mother, I'd say. Look at her throne. It's all shiny. All gold, children. 18 carats, solid gold. Look, it's like there's something shiny all about her, too. Must be more magic. It is. That protects her from anything touching her. Nothing could get close enough. I sure never saw anything like this before. Will you please come closer? Her Majesty desires your approach. Be, be sure you don't get too close. Your Majesty, I present to you Miss Judy. How do you do? Uh, fine, thanks, but we... Uh, 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 Mr. Jimmy. I'm so happy to see you. And we're glad to see you. And this is... The Crazy Cult Dragon, of course. How are you? Oh, very well, Your Majesty. Thank you. And uh, last but not least... Well, who is this furry person with a green ribbon around his neck? Who are you, little friend? I'm the cinnamon bear with the shoe button eyes. And I'm helping these children recover a prize. It's a silvery star that was fashioned, you see, for the very tip top of a big Christmas tree. 
so we've looked and looked till we're almost blue. And if you'll help us out, we're much obliged to you. So you see, Your Majesty? Oh, call me Melissa, won't you? We're going to be friends, and friends shouldn't be too formal. Well, you see, Melissa, the cinnamon bear told you the part about what happened to our lovely silver star, but lots of things happened to us after that. And the last thing was that the wintergreen witch cast a spell on me and forced me to steal the star and take it to her. <gasps> the wintergreen witch? Grim monkey, make a note that I must take up the case of the wintergreen witch in my next counseling meeting. She's been practicing magic without a license. Oh dear, dear me, yes, your majesty. <clears throat> Fix which good and proper. She was going to change us into things. Then I showed her a looking glass and she got awful scared and let us go. And Crazy Quilt took us across the root beer ocean, but... But he sat down on the start and broke it into a dozen pieces. So we thought maybe you could help us get it fixed. Of course I can help you. You can? Oh, that's wonderful. Now, you just listen very carefully to everything I say and your silver star will be restored. Give me crickets and we'll be able to put it on our Christmas tree just like we used to? On the very tip top, Jimmy, and no one will ever know it was the least bit broken. Oh, that will be wonderful. And now, I will write down the instructions for you to follow. There. Now, I put the instructions inside the envelope, Jimmy, and you must follow them exactly. Oh, goody, let's see what we have to do. Oh, Judy, I'm sorry, but you mustn't open it here. Well, why? Because that would keep the magic from working. You see, restoring the silver star is going to take a special kind of magic. If it had been made in maybe land, it would be simple, but unfortunately, it was made in the real world, and that's another matter. It would need quite a little extra work. Will it be hard to do? Oh no, not hard. But you must do exactly as they say. But don't worry, friends. I know it will all work out all right. Gee, Melissa, I don't know how I'll ever be able to thank you. It'll just make Christmas perfect, Melissa. Allow me to express my deepest thanks, Melissa, for past favors and present courtesy. I bow. I'm not fancy, Melissa. But I'm much obliged to you. And you're welcome, my dear friends. I hope, to, I hope you'll visit me again soon after the Silver Star has been restored to its original beauty. We'd sure like to, Melissa. Then do so. And now, Grand Wonky, would you please set our friends on their way? I'd be happy to, to entertain you in my palace for a while, but I know you're anxious to see your star mended and safe. Yes, madam. Thanks so much. But we do have to hurry, kind of. Yes, yeah, so we've got to get back before Christmas. Well, goodbye then, and good luck. Farewell. Bye. Goodbye. goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye, Your Majesty. Will you please follow me in a single file line, if you please, in the order in which you came in? Well, it looks like our heroes are off to more wild adventures. In the middle of the wishing woods, they met Snapper Snick, the crooning crocodile who lives in a big white bathtub and sang. He helps them read Queen Melissa's instructions for restoring their broken star to one piece. It said, underneath the singing tree, another clue you're sure to see. And so they went. Along their way, they were stopped by a great river of mud and attacked by muddlers, huge, ugly creatures made entirely of mud. Our friends climbed frantically on the crazy quilt's back and he tried to swim, but couldn't. As luck would have it, just at the last frightful moment, 
Over the hill came the Cuckleburg Cowboy, headed by Slim Pickens, to the rescue. They then learned that the singing tree was somewhere in the Golden Grove, and off they trooped across the Purple Plains. And just as they came upon the singing tree, right out of nowhere jumped that wicked old wintergreen witch. If only Judy hadn't given her looking glass away, she might have held it in front of the witch's face and scared her like she did on the island of Ovi. But when the wintergreen witch learned that Judy no longer had that dreadful looking glass, she right then and there decided to change the twins and cinnamon bear and crazy quilt into bullfrogs. And it looks like nothing in the world or maybe land can stop her. She just laughs and laughs. Ah! <laughs> I'll teach you to tag along the winter green witch. I'll teach you to trifle with my reputation. Please, Mrs. Witch. Uh, I told you once never to call me Mrs. Witch. Please don't turn us into bullfrogs. I never was very fond of bullfrogs. I dare say they're all right in their way. Keep still, all of you. Bullfrogs I want you to be, and bullfrogs you shall be. I'll begin my incantation. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Abracadabra. Oh. Mumbo, jumbo, abracadabra. Wow. Abracadabra. Well, gee, we're not bullfrogs yet, Judy. Guess maybe she has some more things to say first. Well, I don't feel the least like a bullfrog. Oh, ah, uh, <laughs> I know what's the matter. Definitely. <laughs> what is it, Crazy Quilt? The witch can't change anybody into anything. <laughs> Melissa has not only banished her from the island of Obi, but has taken away her magical powers. <laughs> Look, she's tearing her hair out. Let her tear it. So you would turn perfectly good, respectable citizens of Maryland, USA into bullfrogs, would you? Gross. And so, my hideous hag, you would cast your weird spells on us, would you? <laughs> well, where is your black arts now, may I ask? I can't do as I wished and change your bubbling mouths into those of croaking bullfrogs. Let it be so. Melissa has done me one more bad turn, which I won't forget. But I still have what's left of your silver star. Oh, my word, so she has. You give it back, you nasty old witch. <laughs> make me. My power may be gone, but I can still run faster than the wind. Your star where you'll never, never see it again. Oh dear! I'll run it to the other side of the Golden Grove. It's the north boundary of Maybe Land. And there, on the other side, is a great abyss which separates it from the snow country. I'll throw your star down in the bottomless abyss. No, you won't. I can run, too. Capture, Jimmy. You bet. <laughs> Try and catch me. I'll do my best, you woebegone witch. I'm not exactly built for speed, but I'll stay with you. Ah. Gee willikers, she fell down. Now she's picking herself up again. My goodness, she fell down again. Bless me, Stuffin. What goes on here? One moment, my good woman. One moment, pretty. Who's that? Jumpin' G. Willikers. It's the Grand Wonky. I wonder what he is doing here. Well, hello, friend Wonky. What is the meaning of your welcome presence in these parts? Oh, hello, hello. Greetings from Melissa and all that. Just a moment, please. I'm here on official... Official capacity right now. Wintergreen! Ah! What do you want? I simply want to tell you that you had better be a good witch because you're surrounded by very best quality, a number one witch-proof invisible net, and you cannot pursue your nefarious schemes any longer. Oh, so that's what tripped her up and made her fall. Oh, yes. 
Oh, yes, indeed. Melissa's been watching you with a great deal of interest. Just toss the star back to the children, Wintergreen, and there's a good witch. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't have to be so unpleasant about it. Dear me, what an odious person you are, to be sure. Does Melissa know what happened to us, Grand Wonky? Oh, yes. Melissa knows everything that goes on in Mabyland. She, she sent me here to take charge of the Wintergreen Witch. So step lively, step lively there, there you ex-witch. Give the star back to the young man there. <laughs> oh boy. Thank you so much, Grand Wonky. Not at all, not at all. Just in the line of, bit, line of duty, you know. I'm here purely on business, you understand? Which business? Yes, which business? I've been instructed to take the Wintergreen Witch into exile. So come along now, Wintergreen old thing. Where are you taking me? Have you no heart for this poor defenseless old woman with no home, no place to lay her tired head, or somewhere she's ever been? I don't... <laughs> my, 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 I have no time to bandy words with you. Melissa has instructed me to conduct to Looking Glass Valley to spend the rest of her days. Come along, Wintergreen. Melissa's orders must be carried out to the letter. You, you know, step lively now, Wintergreen. <laughs> Oh, come, 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 come. Don't blubber, please. Don't brawl like that. My, my, my. Such wobbering. Here, 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 here. Well, well. Look here. Why, this wasn't here before. Bless me, stop in. It's a huge silk hat. Why, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. Look, it's got windows in it. And there are some painted letters on it. The flying hat. My word. What do you suppose this is? You know what? I bet you this is the clue Melissa said we'd find. Sure enough. And see, Trudy, there's a door in the hat. Look, there's a note on the door. What does it say, Jimmy? Well, it says, no trespassing unless you are Judy, Jimmy, Cinnamon Bear, and Crazy Quilt Dragon. My, this is interesting indeed. I'm going to open the door. Oh, look. Very comfy looking at it, quick glance. My, my. Four chairs, each by a window. Hmm, stylish stuff. All of the trimmings. <laughs> and look, three are just our size, and there's one big enough for Crazy Quilt. Here's another note on one of the chairs. Read it, Patio Cinnamon. Okay. Very interesting indeed. It's from Melissa. Just as I thought. Dear friends, the flying hat will take it to, out of Maybelland to a place where you should have no trouble getting your precious silver star mended. When you are ready for the flight, just say, top or top and off we go, to the land of ice and snow. Once you're there, find Nikki Frudo. Lots of luck, Melissa. My, oh my. Wait, here's a PS. Do not be afraid of the flying hat. It is equipped with the very best Maybelline motor. Oh, this is awfully exciting. But I wonder why we have to go to the land of ice and snow to get the Silver Star fixed. It is indeed mystifying. But undoubtedly, Melissa has some definite reason for sending us there. Well, I don't want to rush you, but we're wasting time. Suppose we just do as Melissa says and get going? Always the practical man of affairs, Jimmy. Let us go indeed. I'll save the rhyme that Melissa told us to use to make the flying hat go. Everybody ready? Sure ready. thing, you know. Indubitably. What? <laughs> Just keep it. Topper, topper, off we go to the land of ice and snow. Whoa! It's oh. starting! Whoa. Wow! Whoa. We're going up! My goodness! Oh boy, this is swell! Oh. Oh, look, we're going down. Yes, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Whee! Oh. oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, come on. Let's get out. Well. <sighs> Isn't it cold? You bet. Gee, I wish I had my sweater. I could use my green flannel underwear right about now. I'm a bit afraid my crazy quilt colors will get frozen blue. Look at the flying hat! Why, it's tipping itself, just like it's saying goodbye! 
Oh, look, now it's flowing off. Yes, well, there's no doubt about it. This is where Melissa met from. Look, everybody, the palace. There's the bell, Jimmy, ring it. Okay. How do you do? How do you do? Oh. You must be Judy, Jimmy, the cinnamon bear, and the crazy quilt dragon. Oh, I've been expecting you for some time. Won't you come in? Are you Nikki Frudel? I am. Excuse me while I close the door. It's really cold out. Gee, it's a lot warmer in here, all right. We've been kind of chilly out there. Hey, we're not exactly dressed for it, you know, like you are with all that white fur. I don't mean to be rude, but you look like us, and yet you don't. Oh, I'm an elf. Oh, well, Queen Melissa Maidenland sent us in a flying hat to see about getting our beautiful silver star put together again. And she said we were to see you. That's right, Judy. But Melissa meant for me to take you to somebody else and he'll fix it for you. Won't you please follow me up the hall? My goodness, who is it, Nikki Frudel? Why, didn't you know? It's Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Willikers, you don't mean the real Santa Claus, do you, Mr. Frudel? Of course, Jimmy. No one else. Oh my goodness. He willikers. <laughs> welcome, welcome, my children. Come right in. I've been expecting you. Thanks, Santa. Don't mind if I do. Your invitation is most acceptable. Thank you. Come on, come on, Judy and Jimmy. Now, don't be bashful. <laughs> Go ahead. I guess maybe I'm silly, but it's kind of exciting meeting the really, truly Santa Claus. Yes, you see, we never thought we would, and well, well, it's kind of like shaking hands with the, with the president or something. <laughs> well, don't you feel that way now? Don't you know that I love children more than anything in the world? I guess so, but... You know, this is quite a treat for me. The most I ever get to see of children is when they're sound asleep. Don't they ever get to see you? Oh, no. If they're awake, they don't get to see me at all. <laughs> That's it. Judy and I wondered why we didn't see you that Christmas. We stayed awake all night and watched. But our presents were there Christmas morning just the same. Oh, oh, oh I remember that time. I fooled you young Susan and I. <laughs> Let's see about your silver star. Oh, now, by the way, I got your letters for this year too. You did? Gee, that's swell. And I hope you'll be quite satisfied. Now, let's see about your silver star. Did Melissa tell you what happened to it? Oh, yes, indeed. How did she talk to you, Santa Claus? By shortwave. Radio is my hobby. When I have time to spare. Now, you put that star in my desk so I can look it over. You bet. There it is. My, my, my. Suddenly it's smashed, isn't it? That can be fixed, oh yes, easily fixed. Can you fix it in time for Christmas? Of course you understand how important it is to have us by, have, for us to have it by then. Oh, 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 indeed I do. I'm not going to fix it myself. Oh yes, oh uh, no, no, that's a little out of my line but I'll take it you personally to a man who specializes in that sort of work. Oh, oh, Nikki. Yes, Santa? Have my sleigh and reindeer ordered, will you please? Oh yes, and have a couple of fur suits sent up for Judy and Jimmy. It's pretty cold out. How about Crazy Quince and I? Oh, what? Oh, 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 oh. You are so quiet, Fatty O'Simmon. I almost forgot about you. Well, you're pretty set well fixed for the nature by your for the cold country. <laughs> but I, I don't know about the crazy culture. Why not, Santa Claus? 
Well, you look as if you're a bit worse for wear. Let's see. A number of seams ripped and, uh, oh, quite a tear over there. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I think a bit of tailing wouldn't be amiss. Oh, Nikki, call the tailing establishment and arrange for a complete overhaul of the crazy quote dragon. Oh, thank you, Santa Claus. I am not too vain, I hope, but I don't feel my sartorial best when I've got so many rips and tears. <laughs> Is that all, Santa Claus? Mm, yes. Yes, I think so. All right. Send up two fur suits to Santa Claus's office immediately and, uh... What size? He wants to know what size, Judy. Oh, uh, I don't know. I guess about like yours. Size nine and three quarters? Nine and three quarters. Okay. Have the sleigh and reindeer out in front of the palace. Sleigh and reindeer? Okay. And tell the tailor shop to expect one crazy quilt dragon for a complete overhaul. Complete overhaul of dragon. Right. All right, now. Come along now, Judy and Jimmy and Cinnamon Bear. Follow me. Nikki Fruta will show you where to go, Crazy Quilt. Oh, thanks ever so much, Santa. Complete overhaul, hey? Hm. Not bad. Come this way, Crazy Quilt. Well, goodbye, all. When I see you next, I promise a complete revelation. <laughs> oh, what a funny dragon. Now, just a second while I button up my coat. Oh, there. Here are the first suits, Santa. The service is extra good today. Oh, fine. Help yourself, children. You need any assistance with those fastenings? No, thank you. <laughs> Gee willikers, we look almost like the cinnamon bear. Well, all set. Hmm. Oh, it's pretty chilly out. <laughs> we don't mind it now. Oh, look, Judy, here come the reindeer. Oh my goodness! Gee, they're swell! Would you let me hold the reins a while, Santa? Oh, I'm afraid not, Jimmy. You know, the reindeer are funny. <laughs> they won't obey anyone but me, you see. They're my own special private reindeer. And this is the sleigh in which I make my yearly visit to the world. All right, everybody. Here we go! Hi, Donna and Blixen! My goodness! Can you get everything into this one sleigh, Santa? Well, not as much as I used to. I have to tie a couple of trailers now. See that building over there? Sure! What is it? That's the candy factory. And over there is the gold factory, Judy. And the one back there is the mechanical factory. What are you making there, Santa? Oh, toy trucks, uh, engines, bicycles, electric trains. All sorts of things. You know, I have a crew of specially trained brownies and elves at each of these factories, and they're busy all year round. Do you ever have anything made in that big palace where you live? Oh, a few special things, but that's where all the toys are stored when they're finished. And every day there's an inspection in the Grand Hall. Oh, maybe you would like to see one of my inspections after the Star Station. How about it? You bet. Who is it you're taking us to visit, Santa? Oh, you'll see in a minute, Judy. This house is right over there. Oh, boy! Oh! This is one of my best friends. Listen to him sing. I'll tell you who he is. Jack Frost, the world's most famous painter. An ideal in winter pictures that are lovely to behold. I can paint a million pictures with my brushes and my mixtures, but I'd like the work much better if my feet were not so cold. <laughs> Bless me stopping. So that's mm -hmm. Jack Frost. I've mm -hmm. held his fingers many a time, but I've never seen him. Look at all the icicles on his hair. 
Hi, Jack. Some friends to meet you. Here's Judy, Jimmy, and the cinnamon bear. How do you do? Come in, won't you? Thanks, Mr. Jack Frost. I'm glad you dropped in. I'm on my vacation now. Nothing for me to do out in the world after the snow comes. Jack, uh, my little friends, Judy and Jimmy, have a bit of a trouble with the Silver Star, which belongs on top of their Christmas tree. It's been badly smashed. I need fixing. Show it to him, Jimmy. Here it is, Mr. Frost. I'm extra good at stars. I've often admired your work on windows, Jack Frost. Thanks, thanks. Yes, I do fairly good work, but I'll never really be satisfied until I learn how to frost a chocolate cake. Oh, Mother can frost cakes like everything. Maybe she'd teach you. Good. Next time I'm down your way, I'll try to find time for a lesson. Now, if you'll just step this way into my laboratory. My, my. Just look at all the brushes and things. Gee willikers, it's wonderful. This is where Jack does all his research work. It's beautiful. Now, let's see about this star. Hmm, this won't take a second. Just a bit of magic snow cement here, and here, and here, and there. Oh, why, why look, Jimmy. Gee. Well, bless me, Stuffin. Our silver star is all beautiful again, just like it was before. Can I touch it, Mr. Frost? Oh, not for a minute. I'll put it here on the windowsill for a bit. It has to be exposed to the cool north wind to get good and solid. Now, while we're waiting, I'd like to show you a few of the designs I'm working on for next year's frostings. Hmm, there's not a big star in one of your designs. You like stars, Jack Frost? Better than anything. How many points do you put on your stars? He puts five, Judy. You can count them yourself. And now we've got to get started for the big storeroom and meet Crazy Quilt. The tailors have done a mighty fine job renovating him. Let's hurry. I'm anxious to see him. Huh. He'll probably be so conceited you want to be able to touch him with a 10 foot pole. Now, Cinnamon Bear, don't be jealous. <laughs> All right. Come along, everybody. Goodbye, Jack Frost. Thanks for mending the Silver Star. We're ever so grateful. Oh, sure. That's all right. Don't forget, next time you're visiting the world, just stop at our house and I'll have Mother show you how to frost a chocolate cake. You bet I will, Judy. Well, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Jack Frost. Goodbye. Bye. <gasps> bye. <laughs> Brr, it's cold out here. I don't know what we'd do without these fur suits you gave us, Santa. Oh, all right. Everyone in the sleigh now, make it snappy. Will somebody please give me a boost? There you are, Cinnamon Bear. Ah, much obliged, Jimmy. Everybody in? All right, off we go. Hi, Donna. Hi, Vixen. Hi. Oh, here we are. This is the big storeroom. There's Crazy Quill waiting for us. Hello, Crazy Quill. Hello, Nikki. Salutations, my friends. Salutations. Hey, notice anything different, Judy? Oh, my goodness, Crazy Quill. You look specially handsome. Oh, yes, indeed. My friends, you are gazing on a new Crazy Quill dragon. Eh, uh, I guess he's not the only one who has a ball. Of course not, Patio Cinnamon. Green, a very common color green. Now, <clears throat> my bow. Orange, that's what it is, orange. A yellowy orange. It isn't either, it's scarlet. So there. Well, whatever it is, they sure took you to the cleaners, all right. Too bad they didn't dry clean your crazy quilted brains while they were at it. Well, oh, here, 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 here. No quibbling, please. 
<laughs> oh, don't mind them, Santa. They're always like that. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, I see. Now, I have a little surprise for you, Judy and Jimmy. Oh, now, of course, you children might not care for surprises. Or do you? Of course we do, Santa. Well, if you're sure you do, close your eyes, all of you. Am I to be included in this, uh, what you think is going to happen business? I certainly, and Patty with cinnamon too. Oh, oh my, I should hope it's cinnamon buns. Always oh, thinking of your tummy. Now, now, no bidding there, Quizzy Coop. Keep those purple patched eyelids closed tight. <laughs> now, take a, I'll take a hold of one of your hands, Judy, and yours, Jimmy. There we are, all set. All right, come along. My goodness, this is exciting. Where do you suppose he's taking us? I have no idea, Judy. Utterly no idea. There! Here we are. Now we can all sit down. <clears throat> uh, would it be permissible to open our eyes now, Sansa? Oh, no, no, not, not just yet. I'll tell you when. All right, Major Muffy. Carry on. <laughs> you can open your eyes now. Open them wide. Oh, how beautiful. Wow, jumping to you, Willikers. Bless me, Stuffin, what a big heart. My sated crazy quilt heart. I've never seen anything like this. That great Christmas tree, why, it's bigger than the one in the store downtown. It sure is, it's lots bigger. Gee, I have to put my head way back up to see the top of it. And all the colored lights, why, there must be a million of them. A million and a half, to be exact, Judy. That big dumb roof with the lights on it, uh, would that be made of glass now? Well, not exactly. Something quite like it, but stronger, more substantial. One of my own inventions. It's... It's just so beautiful. With all the lovely toys and lights and everything, well, it does kind of take your breath away. You like it, children? You bet. It's one of the most gorgeous things I ever saw. Oh, Jimmy, look at the hundreds and hundreds of beautiful dolls. Gee, and will you take a look at all those bicycles and scooters and toy tractors? <gasps> oh, now we're passing the animal kingdom. Elephants and camels and monkeys on sticks. Animals of every description. No crazy quilt dragons, however. I should hope not. One is enough. Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Oh, oh. here is Nicky Frudo. He's back again. Everything ready now, Nicky? All ready, sir. You know what, Santa Claus? No, what, Judy? I was just noticing. All the little dolls and soldiers and toy animals are standing perfectly still, just like they're waiting for something. <gasps> That's right, Judy. They are waiting for something. Well, what? Well, just to make certain all my toys will know how to behave once I take them out of the world. I put them through a special rehearsal under the big Christmas tree. And while they're marching, my supervisors inspect them. So that's why my toys are waiting for, Judy and Jimmy. The Christmas tree parade. A parade? Jimmy Cricket, Santa. Are we gonna see it? <laughs> you are, Jimmy. And right this very minute. Oh, Major Muffy, proceed with the Christmas tree parade. <laughs> Yes, I do. You know, I feel sort of, well... Oh, 
Let down, Jimmy. Yes, I guess that's it. Gee, we've done so many exciting things, and I guess I'm sort of tired or something. Anyway, it's getting awful close to Christmas, and Judy and I had a swell time with you, Santa Claus. And, well, I think we ought to go home. <coughs> As our adventures together draw to a close, as spokesman for our little party. And just who appointed you as spokesman? As spokesman for our little party. May I say a few words? No. Thank you. I realize that like all good things, even this, our quest for the Silver Star must come to an end. With laurels on our brow. What's he talking about? Just let him rave. Because he always has to make a speech. We spend the last precious moments together. May I propose a toast? Well, I, I think that will be all right, friend Christy Quilt. I propose a toast to those true friends, those stalwart friends. Oh, me, those friends so soon to depart. <clears throat> Lift your glasses of milk, friends. I give you Judy and Jimmy. Oh, 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 oh. well put, well put. Well, have you all had enough? Mm-hmm, yes, Santa. Yeah. I don't wish to hurry you, but it's getting time to leave. I'm going to take Judy and Jimmy. And me, Santa, don't forget me. Oh, oh, no. I wouldn't forget you, Paddy O'Simmon. I'm going to take you back with Judy and Jimmy to their attic. Oh, boy. This is going to be the biggest thrill yet. You've been so awful kind, Santa. We don't know how to thank you. Oh, 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 oh. oh no, That's what Santa Claus is for, to help children find happiness. Well, what about Crazy Quilt? Is he going back with us too? Oh, no, thank you, Jimmy. I think not. In fact, I'm rather taken with the snow country. I'd like to stay on here for a bit. Well, that's quite all right. Glad to have you. Oh, Mickey? Yes, Santa Claus? Is the sleigh ready? They're filling the last trailer now. Oh, 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 oh good. Have you checked everything on my list? Yes, I did that personally. Well, all right. <laughs> then I guess we can start. Come, children. Shake up all their cinnamon there. <laughs> I'll help you up, Judy. Oh, there. Thank you, Santa dear. Now, how about you, Patio Cinnamon? Need any help? Uh, just a little boost, please, Santa. Will you allow me the pleasure, Patio Cinnamon? I don't trust you at all, Crazy Quilt. But you can do it just this once. Oh, such a way to regard the friend with whom you've gone through thick and thin. How come this sudden burst of affection, Crazy Quilt? Are you feeling all right? Oh, quite. Here, let me help you up. <clears throat> there. Thank you, Crazy. You know, sometimes you're a good dragon. But only sometimes, mind you. Only Have you got the silver sometimes. Star, right, Jimmy? You bet. Been hanging on to it ever since you got back. All right. You'll get it next, Jimmy. Okay, Santa. Oh, would you please hold the star for a minute while I get in, Crazy Quilt? Oh, with pleasure, Jimmy. Any little last minute favor, you know. Goodbye, dear Crazy Quilt. I I hate to go away and leave you. Goodbye, Judy girl. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Oh dear, oh dear. I'm afraid I may have to weep a few Crazy Quilt tears. Oh, please don't. We'll see you again sometime. Sure we will. Goodbye, Nikki Frudel. If you ever come back to the world of Santa Claus, Drop in to see us. I'll show you my magic lantern set. Maybe I will sometime, Jimmy. Thanks. Just take a look around, Dickie. See if all the trailers are fashioned securely. All right, Santa. 
Okay, Crazy Quilt, you can give me the silver star now. Crazy Quilt? Where is he? Dwellikers, I don't know. Well, he was just here a minute ago. Oh, he must have dropped back to help Nikki. Hey, Crazy Quilt. He's not I here. Where he went. Gee, gee, where do you suppose he went? Look, there he is. Where, Patty? Over there, running it as fast as he can go. Jimmy Crickets, and he's got the silver star. Look at him go, look at he split. I know that dragon would show us true colors. Oh dear, it makes me want to cry. Well, we'll have to hurry. If you want to catch him. Oh, Nikki, you and Jimmy unhook the trailers of my sleigh. We can go faster without them. All right, Santa. Be with you in a jiffy, Nikki. And I thought Crazy Quilt had reformed. Ah, uh, once a villain, always a villain. Uh, I don't understand why he do such a thing. <gasps> How are you coming, boys? This is the last. Here, come on, Nikki. All right, J take my hand, Jimmy. Oh, up you go. There. Are you in, Nikki? All set. Well, Curse, let's hurry. I don't know. Hey, Blitzen. Hey. There. A little more speed there, boys. Oh, that's better. Girl, just wait till I get me paws on that double crossing dragon. I'm just awfully disappointed in Crazy Quilt. Me too. Look, Crazy, look, Santa Claus. I think we're getting on Crazy Quilt. We are at that, Jimmy. Oh, but, but oh my goodness. What's the matter? He's heading straight for the North Pole. Faster, Donna. Faster, Blitzen. Faster. Oh, just as I thought. There he is, trying to climb up the North Pole. Come on, everybody. After him. We'll have to catch him before he gets up the gets up the pole. Oh, we'll never get him. Why, Sam? Why? The... We'll take him right out with him, and we never see Crazy Quilt on the Silver Star again. Whoa! Whoa there! Whoa, Donna! Whoa, Blitzen! Whoa! Hey, what's the idea of stealing our star, Crazy Quilt? Why, hello, Jimmy boy. Fancy meeting you here. What's all this yelling about the star? You know what about the star? You've got it. Oh, no. Come, come. You, you must be mistaken, my little friend. Such a little thing would never occur to me. Why, Crazy Quilt, you big storyteller. If you didn't steal it, why did you run away like that? Run away? But I didn't run away, Judy. Uh, me trying out my new snowshoes. Oh, great sport. And I suppose he used snowshoes to climb the North Pole? And if so, where are they? Where are what? The snowshoes, you villain, the snowshoes. Oh, um, uh, I, I, I just dropped them off to be a half sold. Oh, don't pay attention to him, children. He's got the star all right. I can see it. It's sticking out of his hip pocket. I'm so ashamed of you, Crazy Quilt, after we trusted you in everything. We won't ever believe in you again, ever. Oh, my friends, my dear, dear companions, don't talk like that. You'll make me... Oh. Look! Look, he slipped a bit! No, he's got a hold again! Oh, can any of you climb after him? If he reaches the top, we're all lost! I know how to bring him down, remember, Jimmy? We all have to yell boo at him. Oh, no, no, not that. Come on, everybody. Now, one, two, three. A boo! 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 He's down. Let's get him, Judy. All right. There he is. Get in there. At last, I've got you, crazy girls. And I'm feeling extra specially ferocious. Girl! Tickle him, Jimmy, tickle him! Oh, my friends, to think that our beautiful friendship should end like. Oh, 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 oh. 
<laughs> He's turning over. Oh Grab the star, Jimmy. Oh Patio Cinnamon, I got the silver star. Oh, you crazy good dragon. Thought you'd get away with it, huh? I'll teach you to trifle with cinnamon bears. Shake them up, children. Shake them up. Shake them up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, children. Huh? What's that? Tickle him, Jimmy. Tickle him good. Oh, that's all right, Judy. I've got the silver spark. Children, what in the world are you doing? Get up off the floor. <sighs> oh, you're all tangled up in that crazy quilt. Did you fall asleep? Dear, I hope you didn't catch cold. Cold? It isn't cold, Mother. Not like it is in the snow country. Sure. It's a lot colder at the North Pole. What? My darlings, are you ill? Have you got a fever? Let Mother feel your hands. You're talking so strangely. We're all right, Mother. We had the most elegant time. We sure did. The Silver Star was gone because the crazy quilt dragon stole it. But Santa Claus helped us catch him, and we get it back. Hmm. You don't seem to have any fever. Now hurry up, both of you. Daddy's home. Did he bring the Christmas tree? Yes, dear, and he wants you to come down and help him decorate it. My goodness, I wouldn't have let you come up here in the attic if I thought you'd go to sleep. But we didn't go to sleep, Mother. We went to Maybe Land. Oh, Jimmy, look at poor Patio Cinnamon on the floor, and he's only about four inches high anymore. Can we take the cinnamon bear down with us, Mother? The what? Why, what? The cinnamon bear, you know, Patio Cinnamon. We found him in the trunk, and he's the one who took us to Maybe Land. And we had lots and lots of swell adventures, too. Oh, I see. Maybe you can take him downstairs, Mother? Of course you can. Now hurry, it's beginning to get dark. Jimmy, the tree is all decorated. Isn't it simply beautiful? Uh-huh. And there's our silver star right up where it belongs. And Cinnamon Bear sitting on a branch right near it. Remember that big Christmas tree that Santa Claus had at his palace? Yes. And remember how we watched the wonderful, wonderful Christmas tree parade with all the toys and dolls? You bet. You know what, Judy? What? I wonder if we really did fall asleep in the attic like Mother said. I don't know, Jimmy. It's all sort of mixed up like. It sure is. I just don't see how we could have dreamed at all. What do you mean? Well, I mean, well, look at Patio Cinnamon. We didn't dream him. Of course we didn't. Dear little Cinnamon Bear. I bet he's about the best friend we've ever got. And what about the crazy quilt dragon, Judy? Well, don't forget that we found our silver star in the crazy quilt up in the attic. Sure, but it was a dragon when we were up at the North Pole. You know, maybe it all, all, all changed around like that because Mother came to look for us. Grown-ups don't believe in magic very much, I guess. No, they just say you're sick or you've been asleep or something. I wonder if we should stay awake tonight. Do you suppose we'd see Santa? We could ask him about it and thank him for helping us catch crazy quilt. Uh, I don't think we better do that, Judy. Why not, Jimmy? We've got to find out, don't we? Well, it would be nice, all right. But don't forget what Santa told us. Children can't see him if they're awake. That's right, he did. I guess you better keep it a secret, Judy. You mean about looking for the Silver Star? Yeah, because nobody believe us anyhow. We believe us, don't we, Jimmy? I suppose so, but gee willikers, I wish Mother hadn't said that about us going to sleep. It, well, it makes me kind of wonder. Well, anyway, we've got our silver star, and best of all, we've got patio cinnamon. You know what, Judy? Let's put him up on the tree every Christmas. Yes, I think we should. After all, that's where he belongs right near the Silver Star, where he can guard it and see that nobody ever, ever steals it again.
I'm the cinnamon bar with the super nice. Jimmy, I thought I heard something. What? It sounds like Patio Cinnamon. Surprise. I go See his very own song. Each night Jimmy, she's only four inches hot. But the folks Shh. say my Listen, growl is just the cinnamon bar. Oh, Jimmy, it is the cinnamon bar. I'll growl, bear. growl, and I'll growl. Oh, we were drinking after all. And if you're act afraid, I'm much obliged to you. And so ends the story of the cinnamon bear. Whether Judy and Jimmy dreamed these adventures or whether they really happened, doesn't matter. They were truly wonderful and most certainly magical. And now that the silver star is shining brightly at the very tip top of Judy and Jimmy's tree, we can smile our biggest holiday smile and say Merry Christmas to you all. We hope you'll always remember Patio Cinnamon the Cinnamon Bear. That's the one thing that will make him very happy. And I can tell you on his behalf, he'll be much obliged to you.